Okay, so let's quickly run through what we think the challenges are. Jeff Gallup, this, this idea of community engagement, how achievable is that really? Well, I think community engagement needs three particular elements. The first is there has to be leadership from the top. Um, if, if, if the system that's being asked to engage gets the message from the top that somehow the government is hesitating, I think that's a problem. Leadership from the top. Secondly, very importantly, uh, a scientific approach to the, the question. A lot of engagement that we've seen over the years has not actually been conducted on a proper scientific basis. There's a feeling that you know people are being used in the process. Mm. We now have a lot of knowledge about what works and what, what doesn't work. So secondly, I think science. Uh, thirdly, I think resources. You know, the, to take this uh, concept seriously, I think there has to be uh, resources, and I'm not just talking about you know the amount of resources. I'm talking about the capacity of the planners to play a facilitating role. I think planners are very important in this process. So I think the three things: leadership, science, and then thirdly, resources. And under that heading, I'd put the capacity of the public servants who are who are commissioned to do this sort of thing. All right, Lucy Turnbull. Um, you know, you've had an opportunity to look around the world. You've run a local government area yourself. How do you ensure that you end up with best practice in New South Wales? Well, I think that we need to f configure a way which harnesses the power of technology, visualisation technology and um, internet-based technology so that people can become mm. engaged in a, physical sp in a physical space and talk to you know, planners and local government people, state government people, I suppose, like we all are today, but also that they can, they can communicate um, outside of office hours, a lot of the time these town hall community meetings are held at six o'clock at night, which excludes a lot of people. It excludes people with busy working lives. Mm. It excludes people with young children who have to be fed, etc. It also excludes a lot of older people who don't like getting out at night. So they, we have to unlock the power of technology yeah. to, to, to have wider and better engagement, two-way engagement, because town hall meetings are typically you know, you say, I say, you say, I say, and there's no actual conversation happening a lot of the time. And to what extent is it about ensuring that people can visualise what the various options are? I mean, I think we've seen with the, with the road plan for Sydney that came out last week, it's like you don't have to look at what a traffic engineer can interpret, exactly. but, but you're looking at a piece of um, visualisation yeah. where you say, oh, I see, oh, that's my house. Is that yes. still there or not? Exactly, but also <laughs> if you're talking about building towns and communities for having an ageing population, having a, a closer focus on transport oriented development or development in existing areas, you can visualise what changing the, you know, the development mix yeah. has on the public realm, on sunlight. There are all sorts of technologies available that let communities have a real look at what's possible, not just in a town hall slideshow, but actually online in their own homes, in the quietness of their own homes or offices if they're working at lunchtime, of course, um, <laughs> so they can see yeah. what, what actually if we leave is all proposed. The they and can, green and they can model yeah. variations and stuff. There is yeah. fantastic technology out there. It's not dreadfully expensive, but we have to harness the power of technology for people to have a better understanding. And see, Van Lee, we all care, don't we, when the uh, development that we think is inappropriate is proposed, and it's, as you say, it's already halfway through the system. How do you make people uh, care in the abstract? How do you make them engage um, at a time that's appropriate, at the beginning? I think the heart of that is the community perception around how much confidence they can have that their participation in the process is actually going to deliver some real outcomes. And so the system needs to be designed, designed to be fair, transparent, accountable, and we need to put an end to this perception of consultation as a tick boxing exercise. Mm. It's not about hearing, it's about listening and responding, and it's about engagement. So for the community to have confidence in this system, that is the, that is the foundation for getting people to engage. It has to be seen to be genuine. It must be genuine. It's um, not just perception, it must be actual reality. But the other key part about enabling people to engage is that the system has to stop looking like a mobile phone contract with thousands of terms and conditions <laughs> where, you know, it's a mess trying to figure out what's being given here is taken away over there. It shouldn't be that difficult to understand 
what are my fundamental rights and obligations that mm. are being changed, what opportunities do I have to challenge those, and finally, what are the outcomes that I'm entitled to fight for and to be heard, um, to have raised in the right. process. So it needs to be simple for people to engage in the process, and we don't want to be wasting our time learning about the process. We want our time and our energy to be engaged yeah. on is this the right outcome and balancing all the interests that need to be balanced. Melissa, just quickly, what your observations on that? I think, I think if we looked at um, engagement in bite-sized pieces that are more digestible, um, maybe that engagement has to be on a neighbourhood base rather than an entire local government area or even a regional base. Um, that allows communities to actually connect to each other or neighbourhoods to build, the, build confidence in a process. Um, it allows some more certainty in, in the outcomes that may be achieved. Um, I think the other thing is we need to be very careful of um, engagement fatigue. Our communities are engaged an awful lot. Um, we've, we've 152 councils have just gone through an integrated planning process where part of that process is a mandatory community engagement component. Um, we're now going through legislative changes. We've all done LEPs. Um, we're working through new standard LEPs. I think there's a, there's a point where our community is going to say, no, no more, um, and we need to step back and say, how, how do we better engage? And, and I think that has to be targeted to that individual community. You can't, mm. one size doesn't fit all for engagement, the same as one size doesn't fit all for local land use plans or strategic plans. Okay.